Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Advaita Singha Prabhu. Uh, we will give you a brief darshan of the deities. Oh, oh nice. Amazing. <laughs> This is the crowd today in the temple room. So this is Advaita Singha Prabhu. He lives Hello. in <laughs> South Africa. He is in South Africa at the moment. And he will be giving a lecture today about Bhagavad Gita 341. And um, yeah, I hand over to you. Okay, thank you for everyone joining in. Nice to see some devotees in Kali Yuga. At least we have the possibility to meet online on Zoom. Lockdown everywhere, also here in South Africa. We have still yeah, a little bit higher security level than in Germany, but we allowed again to go out. So I'm also possible to distribute some books and. Uh, the temple slowly reopens, but will take some time. So I'm really happy to see you all together in the temple room. Uh, you're very fortunate souls. <laughs> um, I think I should sing a few minutes, Jai Radha Madhava. Is it okay? Okay. Jai Radha Madhava Kuncha Vihare Jaya Radha Madhava Kuncha Vihare Upechana Vala Bhirivara Dadi Upechana Vala Bhirivara Dadi Upechana Vala Bhirivara Dadi Yashoda Nanda Racha Chana Ranshana Yashoda Nanda Yashoda Nanda Racha Chana Ranshana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Chaya Radha Madhava Kuncha Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kuncha Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kuncha Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रभु फाट प्रभु फाट प्रभु फाट चय चय प्रभु फाट so I couldn't play with the card charts because of the delay. It didn't sound, sound correct. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Happy to see Chinese die again. Long time not see, maybe more than one year now. Um, we're reading from the Bhagavad Gita today, from the third chapter, um, verse 41. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Tasmatvam Indriyanyado Niyamya Bharatashaba Apmanam Brachahi Yenam Yana Vikyana Nashanam Therefore, O Arjuna, best of the Bharatas, in the very beginning curbed this great symbol of sin, lust, for regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. Purport for his divine grace, Aisi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. The Lord advised Arjuna to regulate the senses from the very beginning so that he could curb the greatest sinful enemy, lust, which destroys the urge for self realization and specific knowledge of the self. Jnana refers to knowledge of the self as distinguished from the non self or in other words, knowledge that the spiritual soul is not the body. Vikyana refers to the specific knowledge of the spirit soul's const constitutional position and its relationship to the Supreme Soul. It is explained thus in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Jnanam paramakuyame yatvikyana samanvitam sarahasyam tadangamcha the knowledge of the self and supreme self is very confidential and mysterious. But such knowledge and specific realization can be understood if explained with the various aspects by the Lord himself. Bhagavad Gita gives us the general and specific knowledge of the self. The living entities are parts and parcels of the Lord and therefore they are simply meant to serve the Lord. This consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. So from the very beginning of life, one has to learn this Krishna consciousness, and thereby one may become fully Krishna conscious and act accordingly. Lust is only perverted, lust is only the, the perverted reflection of the love of God, which is natural for every living entity. But if one is educated in Krishna consciousness from the very beginning, that natural love of God cannot deteriorate into lust. When love of God deteriorates into lust, it is very difficult to return to the normal condition. Nonetheless, Krishna consciousness is so powerful that even a late beginner can become a lover of God by following the regulative principles of devotional service. So from any stage of life or from the time of understanding, 
its urgency, one can begin regulating the senses in Krishna consciousness, devotional service of the Lord, and turn the lust into love of Godhead, the highest perfectional stage of human life. Om Magyana Timananda Sya Kinanchana Shalakya Jakshur Milita Mira Tasmash Guru Venema Richitanya Mano Vistam Stabitamiena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Vadantikam He Krishna Kuruna Sindhu Nina Bandu Chagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastude Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vindavaneshvare Rishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Mancha Kalpa Darupyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Bhavani Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtadya Deshatarina, Chai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhara, Sri Vasari Gaurabhakta Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, now the verse again. Therefore, O Arjuna, best of the Bharatas, in the very beginning curbed this great symbol of sin, lust, for regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. Um, this verse is an is a answer actually of a question of Arjuna. And in a previous shloka, I think it was 30, Five or thirty-six, Arjuna asked the question: um, Why are we acting sinful, unwillingly? What is the reason why we always forced to act in a sinful way? And then Krishna, uh, um, the answer of Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, said that um, at this last, last it keeps us in the shackles of material energy. So the last is actually the all devouring, devouring enemy of the soul. Because this last is a reflective, a re reflection of the original spiritual love we experience in the spiritual world. But now, in our condition, in the material world, we experience this love of Godhead in, an, in, a, in another way, and it's, it self expresses in the form of lust. And Srila Prabhupada, he explains that we, in the beginning, actually, of our Krishna consciousness, in the beginning, when we hear about Krishna, when we learn about Krishna, when we hear His holy name, when we meet the devotees, we should be very, very serious. Um, we should be very, try as, as far as possible to follow the re regulative principles of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. So we are not, in the beginning, pure spirit souls. In one sense, we are pure spirit souls. We all are all pure and spiritual, uh, but we're covered by this material energy, uh, by the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And for the most parts of our life, we unfortunately, unfortunately not in the mode of goodness. So goodness is next, closer to, to god godliness, to a higher spiritual consciousness. Um, but to our degraded lifestyle somehow uh, we are forced actually to always be in contact with the modes of passion and ignorance and it's very difficult for the spirit soul actually to wake up to find a way out of this um, degrading condition so we are fortunate actually very fortunate that we met at one point in our life we met devotees we hear the holy name maybe it was a kid on online on youtube Maybe we got some prasadam in Christmas time from one devotee distributing, or there's so many restaurants, or we have Christmas markets um, where devotees distribute prasadam. Then there's all over the world, in each corner, there's somewhere with distribution of prasadam. 
distribution of books, Harinams, Holy Name. Now we're a little bit more shackled because of the lockdown, but the world is still found a way to come together, meet online and yeah, have association through hearing. So we can get nourished to this spiritual sound vibration. It will, it will actually cleanse our, cleanse our hearts from this material condition of lust. So when we hear this sound vibration, we should not only hear with our material ears, we should also try to connect and really understand actually that we are spirit soul in our hearts, residing in our heart, and we listen consciously with, with an in intention actually to get purified, to get closer to the Lord. And then the Lord himself will come and will sit down. He already is there, but more and more he will reveal himself and actually we can experience that we are not alone. Krishna is always here. He never forgets us. We sometimes forget him. I mean, there's so many people nowadays running around and pretending there's no God. And now we say, you know, I don't want to know about him. Um, yeah, Advaita Sima, you're not existing. It will, it will hurt if somebody tells me I'm not existing, actually. I, I will think, okay, if, if these people tell me I'm not existing, then you know what, go to hell. I don't need your association. So I will do my own thing. But Krishna, he's so kind, he's so merciful. He is always there. He will never forget us. He always encourages us, actually, that we, that we come more and more closer to him. It's like described in the, uh, in the Upanishads. There's these two birds sitting together in our heart. And one bird is, is Vishnu, the Paramatma, the super soul. And the other bird is we, the condition, the conditioned spirit soul. And one, one bird, us, we eat the fruits of the tree where these two birds are residing. And the other bird is watching. Uh, he is Anumanta Upatrashtra. He is the, um, how is it in English? Um, he is the observer, observer and uh, the one who, who gives allowance to act. So he all, always sees us and encourages us and, and he, he will never leave us. So in one sense, Krishna consciousness is very easy, but in another way we experience ourselves, it could, can be very difficult. Why? Why it can be difficult is actually this unnecessary material desires. We hanging for something what is actually temporary what will not have any benefit at all. The only benefit is actually that we become Krishna conscious. And Prabhupada says in the purport that the only solution is to be become Krishna conscious. That's why in the, in the early stage of life, it's the best to begin with. He also mentions it doesn't matter, even if in old age, you can still catch up. It's not, it's not too late, it's never too late. But the, the, um, the motivation should be, the consciousness should be, even in old age, we should have a really deep understanding and we should understand the urge, the necessity to become Krishna conscious. Otherwise, what will happen? We will fall again in the samskara of birth, death, old age and disease. There's no way out. We're in a material prison right now. It's literally a prison made of our false ego. We can experience this very easily. I mean, we can't do what we want. We are not independent. We have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to pass urine, we have to go to the toilet. Um, we fall in love, we need to get knowledge, we wanna have children, we, we wanna be accepted in society, we wanna experience bliss and and so on. We have so much material desires what actually binds us on this material body. Then the other thing is from the false ego that we think I'm this body, I'm this guy, I'm this girl, I'm the devotee, I'm the super devotee, I'm the most fallen devotee, I'm a book distributor, I'm a cook, I'm yeah, I, I, yeah whatever, whatever identification we have it's, it's actually not what we really are. We are conditioned ourselves 
with this false identification of the ahankara of the false ego. So how come comes this ahankara? Why why we choose actually that we are in this condition? Uh, the root of this is uh, is envy. At one point, envy arises, and we become envy of Krishna. So Krishna gives us possibility actually to experience another reality separated from him. So he, out of his causeless mercy, he created Maya, he created the material energy for us conditioned spirit souls to actually enjoy and live separate from him. And I don't have children, I'm married and I know how it feels to love someone, but imagine your children or your baby and the love a mother has for her children and imagine the children want to go away and leave their parents. And it must be so much pain for the parents to, to, to see that their, their, their children running away. So the same is for Krishna. He experienced so much pain to let us go. But out of, out of his mercy, um, he, he always respects our free will. He, will. he accepts it. He said, okay, go out in the material world and have your experience. So... The root cause of this is envy, that we want to be like Krishna. Also recently I talked to my wife and, you know, when I really deeply meditate about it and I just read the Priyat Bhagavad Amrita from, uh, from Sanatana Goswami and it's very um, enlightening to see how Gop Kumar, he travels step by step, closer and closer. He, he reaches Goloka Vrindavan. First he comes to the heavenly planets and he gets the position of Brahma and but he always, he got this Gopal Gayatri mantra, uh, Gopal mantra, and he always chanted, chanted this mantra, and he could remember Krishna, and he was originally a coward boy from Govardhan, so his only desire was to go back to, to the spiritual world, Loka Vrindavan, to Krishna. So then from Brahma Loka, he went to Shiva Loka, to, uh, to, to, to the residence of Shiva, then after this, he never was satisfied, then he, he, he had the best, the best place, the best association, everything was perfect, but his desire was actually to go back to Krishna and to his sweet Gopal. And then the next destination was Ayodhya. He lived, he lived um, where Lord Ramachandra resides. I'm sorry, before Vaikuntha came, he went to Vaikuntha. And um, he saw all these Vaikuntha vases with four arms, beautiful, decorated. And he saw mystical things happening all around. He experienced something he, he never heard before. He saw colors and and experiences and smells and and expressions and he saw so many things in the spiritual world he couldn't even imagine that this is possible and he was so eager to see lord narayan and when he first time he saw the vishnu vishnu dutas or also uh, residents from the spiritual world he immediately made obeisances he he, he thought actually that's that's the Vaikunta, uh, this is lord narayan vaikuntha the lord of vaikuntha um, because they were so beautiful and he never saw Narayan uh, before. So he was so enthusiastic in the paid obeisance and they immediately, no, 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 we are not Narayan, you know, no, it's not the Lord. And this happened several times actually that, that, that the servants of the Lord came and, and Gop Kumar, he thought actually this is Narayan and he always paid obeisances. And at one point Narayan appeared and Gop Kumar was so happy and, and embraced each other and then the the residents of Vaikuntha, they were like wondering what's going on, you know, like Gop Kumar treats Narayan like a friend because Gop Kumar was in a different mood. His mood was a coward boy to go back to Krishna and have a different relationship with him. So Narayan, he knew his, his heart. So Narayan actually, um, he always showed himself as, as, as Gopal, as Krishna. So Gop Kumar, he always could perceive this form of Krishna in his coward form in, in Goloka Vrindavan. Um, but after some time, it was not enough for Gop Kumar actually to see, to see the Lord um, as Krishna. But he know actually he's in Vaikuntha and where are the gopis, where are the gopas, where's Nanda Maharaj, where's, where's Mother Yashoda. So he was very, he, he was not satisfied in his heart. He still had, had the desire to go to Krishna. Narayan he knew, so at one point Gop Kumar he left even Vaikuntha. If we can manage it we come to Vaikuntha after this lifetime, wow, what a big success. But he was not satisfied. He wanted to go, go back to Govinda. 
So then he went to Ayodhya to Lord Ramachandra's abode. And yeah, similar happened to him like in, in Vaikuntha. Um, at the end of his um, staying there, he was not satisfied completely. So Narada Muni came and then finally he went with him to the local Vrindavan, to the spiritual world, to, I mean, it's all the spiritual world, but his, his heart's desire. And when he first arrived there, um, he didn't know, you know, what's going on. He waited for, for Krishna. And at one point, um, Krishna appeared and then he was so happy to see his friend, Gop Kumar. Hey, where are you so long? I, I waited for you. And he embraced him. There's this picture also. Maybe somebody knows this beautiful painting where Krishna embraces Gop Kumar. And yeah, Gop Kumar was so happy to be back and just rendered service to Krishna. And, and I just thought about the last few days and more and more that imagine we go back to the spiritual world. Like now we, we hear about it and we read about it and maybe we see little Krishna movie or, you know, uh, and, it, and it's nice, but really think about it. Today we went we in South Africa and it's beautiful mountain and we went, went to the Table Mountain and it was so nice, fresh air and beautiful trees and waterfall and, and birds, beautiful birds with long tails. I never saw these birds before. You said maybe they are from the spiritual world. <laughs> So it was actually amazing, you know, to be in nature. And then I, I told my wife, imagine we would be back in the spiritual world. Imagine we, we play now with Krishna. And there's no, there's no lamentation. There's no death, no old age, no disease, no coronavirus, no lockdown. Everyone is blissful and happy and satisfied. But at one point, I thought more and more, I said actually, but one thing is like, it's always about Krishna. And this is this en enviousness we have in our hearts that we, why only Krishna, you know? And then is Krishna, I mean, he always wants to be satisfied and everyone should worship him, you know? It's, it's actually, if you're honest to yourself and then, you know, I just made, it was just some thoughts, you know? It's, it's really, it's really deep rooted that we actually envy that actually, I also want to be in the center, you know? I don't want to be the servant time. Probably it's not like this in the spiritual world that we only, you know, that we have also relationships and there are also other devotees and, but our conception, if you really think about it, are we really ready to give everything up? Are we really ready to go back to Krishna? And that we only live, live for his purpose, like the gopis, they would die for Krishna. When, like when Narada Muni came and asked um, Krishna, he found it and he needs some dust from the, from the gopis and they immediately gave him the dust from their feet. And then Narada Muni asked, are you not afraid you can, if you put the dust on the head of the Lord, then you go to hellish planets? And they say, yeah, we don't care as long as Krishna is satisfied. So their, their inspiration, motivation was to, to serve the Lord, not to go to the hellish planets. They didn't care. So are we also ready to give everything up and really go for it? Yeah, it's a question we should ask ourselves. And this is the root cause, this envy. But this envy actually is not the beginning. The beginning, and this is also not the beginning, but the beginning is lust. So we know also from Bhagavad Gita, from lust, karma, kroda, anger arises. Then from kroda, from, from, from anger, we get frustration. We want something, we grieve it, we, we get greedy. Loba, greed arises. Then we are... I mean, many of us experience, I was a smoker, for example, and I wanted to stop. And then after a few days, I wanted to smoke again. And I just think about it. And lust arises. You know? And then you, you, you think about it, you contemplate. And at one point, it's so much in your, in your head. And then you actually, it overwhelms you. And then you feel it. And then you get frustrated. And then it comes to moha, illusion. Then you fall again in illusion, even though before you decided, no, I stopped smoking cigarettes. But then the illusion comes back and then you're completely bewildered and you smoke again. And then from Moha, what next is, arises is pride, Madan. And from this pride actually leads to envy. It says all the five leads to Matsara, to envy. So the root cause of envy starts with lust. But that is not the real beginning because we can ask ourselves, we as devotees especially, we don't want to experience lust. Lust doesn't mean necessarily sexual desires. It's, it's, it's general material desires separated from the Lord. 
because we want to enjoy it without Krishna. So from where is this last coming from? I mean, I don't wake up tomorrow and I, and I say to myself tonight, okay, tomorrow I want to be totally bewildered, totally Maya, and want to enjoy and, and want to forget everything about Krishna and just have some fun. Nobody of us thinks like that. But it can happen. So how can it happen? So there's one major thing, actually, why we as devotees sometimes fall, sometimes from big positions, gurus, sannyasis can fall, but also we as, not small devotees, but as, as how you say, yeah, more inferior maybe, or, or, or more in the beginning, we also can fa fall down every day, actually. Maybe we, we miss chanting our rounds, or we break a principle, or whatever. So where's this last coming from originally? Um, it's actually the main thing why it's, 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 it comes again in our heart, it's because we don't protect our bhakti lata properly. There's the bhakti lata and then the, the how you say, the um, flower, how is it in English? Um, the, the creeper of devotional service and should come a flower, but also with the, with the, with the bhakti lata, there are lots of weeds around it. So we're also nourishing these weeds with our desires. And especially when we chant and we think about so much other stuff and we all give energy to this other material desires, so we nourish it. So this bhakti lata um, goes in a different direction than to Krishna, if we're not careful enough. And the main factor why we have these other desires in our mind and why we have lust and why we can't focus fully on Krishna um, comes from aparada. And aparada means, means, means um, again, oh, sorry, um, offense. That we made offense to other devotees, made offense to the holy name. There's different kinds of offenses. There's seva aparat, there's dham aparat or tirta aparat. So seva aparat is, is for devotional service that you don't follow the principles of, of Pancharatri Gavidi, like we have in the deity worship, for example, in the temple. There's different rules and regulations, and if we don't follow them properly, it will lead to seva aparat. Then we have guru aparat, that we don't follow the, the instructions of the guru or the vows we took, that we chant 16 rounds, that we follow the four regulative principles. It's a guru aparat. Then we have um, dharma aparat, that we go to holy places, holy theaters, and we commit offenses there. Then the most dangerous, of course, is Vaishnava aparat, that we commit offenses to the devotees of the Lord. What else we have? We have Nama Bharat, the holy name, like when we chant the 10 um, offenses against the holy name. The first one we have is Vaishnava Bharat. Then the third one is already to disobey the orders of the spiritual master, it's Guru Bharat. So this all needs to Nama Bharat, actually. And was the word Aparada, if you think about it, when you see the word Radha, so in the word Aparada is actually Radharani. So Aparada means, means, means Sunyarada, Aparada, Sunyarada. There's a book from Bhakti Kirta Swami that explains this nicely. And Sunyarada is the missing mercy for the Rani. So when we commit Aparada, we can't access to the mercy for the Rani. And without Radha, there's no Krishna. So we are not, it will not happen. We will not get love of God if we commit these offenses. So this is actually the root cause of, of this lust is that we offend devotees, offend the holy name, offend the guru, offend our service. So th there we have to be very careful. Like now we have a beautiful association here in Berlin, we have a temple. It's very, it's very, very rare. I mean, how many temples do you have in Berlin? Maybe there's some other temples, uh, Vaishnava tradition related, um, but now I have ISKCON devotees together and it's, it's so beautiful, you can see the deities. Um, for us, for example, in Cape Town, now we had three months, there was no temple. It's still no temple, it's closed. Um, you only can take Darshan outside, you're not allowed to go inside. Um, yeah, for three months, I didn't have any association, no devotees. It's, it's really rare, so we should really appreciate and yeah, thank Krishna every day that we have this association. And we should show also the other devotees that we appreciate this association. This is what Krishna wants to see from us. But if we, sometimes maybe we have an argument with a devotee and, 
And maybe even if, if, if I'm right and the other person is wrong, uh, and, and I explain to him, hey, bravo, I don't want to hear it, you know, go in the corner, <laughs> whatever, you know, it's, it's the way you, 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 you say it. It's not if you're right or wrong. Maybe you're right, but the way you express yourself, the way you, you talk to this devotee is wrong. So we have to be very careful how to deal with a devotee. Or sometimes we speak about Jesus or about Muhammad or other religions or other scriptures. It's very easily that we offend them. It's also offense against the holy name. Vedic literatures, literatures and literatures in the in the pursuance. Uh, so we have to be very careful. Jesus was a great devotee of the Lord. Prabhupada never spoke bad about Jesus. So even if you offend other traditions, other religions, it's, it's, it's an apparat. It's also Chiva apparat. It's not only that the Vaishnavas, we own the, the, the saintly people and all the other people can go to hell. No, Krishna is everywhere. Krishna is not, the two birds are not sitting only in my, in my heart, it's sitting in all our hearts. So also in, in each individual, when I go out in Sankirtan, they see books, for example, and I meet a few people, and maybe someone shout at me, and then I think, oh, this idiot or something, and I start thinking about him, or even maybe I argue with him and, 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 and throw to him harsh words. Actually, I offend him. Krishna will not be pleased. So anyways, just that we have this little understanding that actually all these kind of apparatus, it creates this last, and that's why it's very important for us that we um, create a humble attitude, that we, that we really live the world, whereas Trinata Biso Nichina, Tara Biso Hishina, Manina, Manadina, Kirtanya, Sadahi, Sadahari. Like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, we should wear it on, on our neck, this verse. We should always, we should really, we should really lift, lift this verse, because this is the, this is the way we can attract Radharani's mercy. This is the way it's spoken by, by Lord Chaitanya. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not nothing, uh, not, no one else than Shimati Radharani. And this is the most important aspect in our spiritual practice to become humble. More, more humble than the grass in the street, more tolerant than a tree, and always offer respect to others without respecting anything for yourself. Only in this consciousness we can actually chant the holy names. So this is the secret actually to protect us from Aparada when we, when we are humble. Even if somebody is shouting with you, there's, we don't need to fight back. We don't, need to, we don't need to argue with him actually. We can tell him, bravo, I, I, I agree that we disagree and I respect what you say, but I have a different opinion or whatever, but we have to see the situation and the circumstances, but we always should have a really humble attitude, especially when we de deal with Vaishnavas, but also when we deal with other people, also with our parents, for our teachers. We should have, we should be grateful, whatever we got also from the material world and from other people in our society. Uh, yeah, if somebody steps on you, then don't step back, ac accept it and actually see yourself, why is this happening to me? Why is, why is this pain coming now in my life? Why, why I'm sick? Why is he treating me like this? Why is my wife, why is my husband leaving? Whatever. Um, we, should, we should ask ourselves from, from where is he coming? Why, why is this happening to me? Now, not, not, not what is wrong with him. Actually ask yourself what is wrong with me. So this attitude, this Krishna really appreciates if we contemplate like this, that we actually understand I'm not so great. Maybe nobody's great. We're all in the material world. We're all in the, in the material toilet and we get flashed all the time. So we're all in the same boat. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a nice place. So if we understand our position and we see also other, others' position and that actually we're all in ignorance and I'm in ignorance now and the other person maybe act in a way what is not appropriate, but out of his ignorance also, I forgive him. I see him as part and parcel of Krishna and I show him respect without respecting anything for myself. Yeah, and be tolerate like a tree, like a tree always stands in the same place, hot weather, cold weather, dogs coming, pissing on the tree. 
you know, the tree is, is always tolerating that in, in summertime you give shade, in, in, you give fruits, you know, the tree is always very merciful to us and toler tolerates all circumstances. So we should become like trees, not that inactive, inactive and you just stand like this. No, but we should have this mood of, yeah, tolerating a little bit more in our lives. And this is actually the way where we can bind Krishna, where we can really attract his mercy. Like there's this one picture I saw once on Facebook where his um, statement comes from Bhakti Siddhanta Swami, um, but this this one picture and then um, one one devotee, he's, he's looking behind the curtain and he wants to see Krishna. And the second picture is actually that um, the other devotee, he cleans the floor in the temple and Krishna, he looks out from the curtain and he wants to see his devotee. So this should be our mood. We should act in a way that Krishna wants to see us. Not that we want to see Krishna. First, we have to be qualified. So we should act in a way that Krishna wants to see us. And if we not identify us with this material body and with the circumstances and whatever happens to us, then Krishna will see this and he will give us the credit and he will help us to get rid of lust because of with our own with our own um, endeavor it's not possible to get free from lust, envy, greed, illusion, madness, pride. It's it's not possible. We can try to some degree. When I was a new devotee in the temple and then my bhakti leader and under Krishna, he told me, when you go out on Sankitan, you will see all the six enemies will, 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 will attack you. You will experience envy, you will experience um, greed, pride, um, illusion, madness. And I was thinking for myself, I'm not pride, I'm not envy, I, I'm, I'm not proud. Maybe I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm illusion, I'm not an illusion, you know. I, I thought like that actually. And then I went out on the street and then I could see what he meant actually, all these anatas, that the, all the um, qualities we have in us suddenly come to the surface and we got confronted. So out of my myself, I would never get rid of this, but Krishna, he helps me because I went out, I have to surrender, I have to chant, I have to read, I, I, I seek for the association of devotees. And then Krishna, he sees the endeavor, and then he will purify us. And then another ingredient, of course, is Trinata Bisunichana, to be tolerant in a, more tolerant than a tree and more humbler than the grass on the street. Because if you're not humble, then we think we can do it ourselves, and then Krishna will think, sorry. Krishna will think, I'm a coward boy today, <laughs> got inspired by Gop Kumar. <laughs> Coward shirt. Yeah, when we are not humble, Krishna will think, "What should I? What should I do? What? 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 He, he can figure out everything himself. You know, he don't. He doesn't need my help." But when we're really depending on him, like a child cry out, is crying out for his mother, "Please, Krishna, I'm, I'm fallen. I can't do it myself. Please help me." Then he will help us out. And this material world is described as like an egg, a shape of an egg, and there's different layers, and the first layer is earth, and then the ten times more is is yeah, was earth, water, fire, um, air, and th then ether. So this is different layers from the universe, and each layer is ten times bigger than the other one. So we, if this is this egg, and then the next layer is is earth, it's ten times bigger than the universe, and then we have water, it's ten times bigger, and so on. And then we have um, the material energy, Prakriti, Pradhan. And yeah, so we can't, we can't, from ourselves, we can't go through these layers ourselves. It's not possible. Only Krishna, he can take us out from the material world. So the material world is like a big prison. And like we talked before, it's also the body is a prison. We can't go out of this body. Only if you have mystical powers, maybe it's, it's possible for some one of you, I don't know but I can't leave my body. I can kill myself, but then I stuck as a, as a spirit, as a ghost, and then I have to suffer the consequences. Um, but to leave this material world and go back to the spiritual world, we are depending on the mercy of Krishna. And I just wanna share a story of a friend of mine. Um, 
he's also a devotee now, but before he was, he was, he had some problems with drugs and he, he went to jail and he was in prison for some months. And, and on this occasion, he wasn't completely guilty, but he was also not un, unguilty, how to say. But anyways, and, and then he wanted to come out and he, 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 he tried so much things to come out of the prison earlier because what this guy was, was telling against him was not, was not the truth. So he was kind of really finished because they told him he has to suffer for three years and he has to stay in the prison. But he did only a small fracture of what he told and was not a reason to really put him in jail. So he was very frustrated because he, he himself, he thought he has to stay three years in prison now. And yeah, in this, in this situation, actually, he realized that, that the material world, it's, it's always a prison. Everything is a prison, but he could now realize, and he was already in this in this mindset. He has to stay for three years. Um, then the, the day before, he had the court case. He was praying. He was spiritual already a little bit, and he was praying to the Lord and he prayed to God, um, "Please help me out. Please help me out." And but then on the day from the from the court where the court case was held uh, in the morning, uh, he was not praying, "God, please help me out." He changed his mood and he said, okay, I did something wrong, but what they are saying, it's not, it's not, it was, it was not the real thing. So if you should desire, please help me out. And he actually said, if you help me out of the prison, um, I will do whatever you want. And I will, I will be a God, a God conscious person. And I will stop with all this nonsense. Please help me if you so desire. So the, the prayer was actually more nice that we tell Krishna, yeah, he can decide what's best for us. He knows more. If, if, if this person missed these three years of, of prison for his purification, then the Lord will, will arrange it. Otherwise, he will help him out. So then the court case was held and he was, um, how you said, he decided that he is, he is not guilty. And then immediately he was released of the prison. And in the moment he told me when he came out of the jail, um, his friend was waiting outside. And in the same minute he, he, he left the jail, he immediately went to his friend and asked him if, if, if he has some drugs for him. I mean, he just came out and he just prayed, you know, these last two days and promised God that he will stop with this nonsense, but he immediately went back to his old habits. Yeah, and so it happens at one point, um, he again came in, this, in the same uh, atmosphere with, with the wrong people um, and he was addicted to drugs for some time. But then at one point he got, he met devotees and he got books and he started reading the books and he got very convinced from Krishna consciousness. And he visited the temple even and asked, I talked to the devotees and he decided to, to, to become a devotee. And he gave everything up and, and slowly he, he started chanting and reading and associate, associate more with devotees. But then an old court case came along where he was, um, like a thing was maybe two, three years before, happened a long time ago, but he had a new court case and then decided he has to go again in prison for three months. So my friend was thinking, no, I want to be a devotee. I don't want to go to jail. He, he, he couldn't understand what's going on. Uh, but at the same time, when he went inside, he, he thought, okay, it's, 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 the, it's the desire of the Lord. And he thought maybe he can preach inside and can share Christian consciousness to other people. And he said it was not a good idea inside the prison because nobody liked him uh, because of that um, to fanatic and, and vegetarianism and he couldn't accept it. And so at one point he had, it was not easy for him because to chant and to be with people, have association um, with people who, who are criminals is not so easy for a devotee who actually is supposed to associate with, with other devotees. But somehow he managed and then they even arranged, Krishna arranged for him that he get released nine days earlier because of some mistake. So the day when he was released was Chamastami, Krishna Chamastami. So Krishna arranged for him the situation to come out on Chamastami. And he said the day before Chamastami, he actually didn't want to come out because he had a job inside, he had a television inside, Sometimes he got some drugs inside and it was very difficult for him. And then he thought, when I go out now, I will become a Hare Krishna and I have to give everything up. And so, somehow he was not ready to really let go. 
So he was very afraid to get released from the jail. So he was thinking, oh my God, tomorrow, you know, I have to surrender to Krishna, but I don't want. And even Krishna helped him out to come out on Chamastami. Uh, was kind of a sign like, wow, you know, Krishna wants me to come out on his birthday, so to say. Um, in his heart, he still hold it on on the material world. And we can see from this example that what is our condition is also, maybe we want to be devotees now, we want to chant Hare Krishna and we have fun, but are we really ready to let go? Are we really now, if somebody tells you tomorrow, okay, you, will, you have to leave your body tomorrow. Today is your last day and you can go back to the spiritual, spiritual world. Are you really ready? Just maybe if you can take out something of this lecture, some nice meditation. Go into this feeling like you have to die. Like many devotees in the last three months, I saw so many devotees uh, leaving their body. Yesterday, our dear Mangalananda Bravo from Germany uh, left his body. Uh, Bhakti Chao Swami is in a critical condition and other devotees had very different kinds of, of illnesses, not related to Corona now, but we can see that, that death is something that happens all the time to all of us. But if it happens to us, then it's, it's different, you know. Ask yourself, go in this, go in this feeling of the death confronts you actually. It's, it's right at the door. It knocks every day. We're getting older and older. So we never know actually when our time comes. So it could be tomorrow. It could be now. It could be in 100 years. We don't know. But if we have this urgency that we understand actually I want to go back to Krishna like I said I walked here today with my wife on the mountain and actually I thought oh my god I don't want to take birth again I want to go back to the spiritual world and want to play with Krishna but on the other side I can see there's some desires and, and maybe some misconceptions of fear um, yeah it's we should take a few minutes or before we chant even maybe we can I also have to do this more and more than we yeah just think about what would it be to go back to Krishna, I, am I ready? And then offer it to Krishna, give him, give him your package and tell him, yeah, actually, there's so much stuff inside, so much lust and desires. I can't get rid of myself, um, but now I surrender unto you. Like this nice prayer, um, um, I always recite in the Tupuja. Um, it's um, from, from Chitani Chaitan Rita. Krishna Tumala Yana Hari Bala Ekabara Maya Bande Krishna Haite Tare Parakare. And the, the prayer means, um, although, sorry, one is immediately freed from the clutches of Maya, from the material energy, if one seriously and sincerely says, seriously and sincerely says, My dear Lord Krishna, although I have forgotten you for so many long years, for so many lifetimes and in this material world. But from this day on, I'm yours. I'm your sincere and serious servant. Please, my Lord, engage me in your devotional service. So this is the kind of mood we should de develop. I don't have it myself. I just recite the prayer day by day and hope at one point I can realize it. But sometimes actually, it's more, it's more real, maybe you more purified, you did some service, you have some devotees, then Krishna, he reciprocates and then our, our prayer, our mood also changes. And this is the, the, the point actually, that we set this intention for each kind of service we're doing, that we have actually this short intention, please Krishna, accept this service, please engage me in your service. I, I'm most fallen, I'm not qualified, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm, today I'm tired and I want to chant these 16 rounds, but I'm doing it for you, please accept it. Or today I have to cook, okay, I offer it for you. I'm going book distribution, it's, it's rainy, there's no people and I don't know what to do, but please accept this humble service. So if you can create this mood actually, Krishna will accept it. This is Bhakti Yoga. What can we offer to Krishna? It's like, he doesn't need anything from us. He just needs this love and this intention that we really want to do it for him and that we can develop and that's the success actually that we overcome lust and if we are conscious how we deal with others how we treat devotees 
if, we, if, we, if I see, I, I don't do this nicely, I, I'm enemy of him or I don't like the way he speaks or the way he's dressed or the way he talks to me, then maybe I, I, should, I, should, I should serve him. I, I find something or meditate about it. What can it be? What is his, his good qualities? Not meditate about the bad things. See the good in other people or try to humble, humbly serve him or even tell him, hey, sorry, my heart is, I'm so, I'm so contaminated, but actually you're such a great soul and tell him your appreciation. For example, pray to Krishna every day. Um, one time I asked Sachinanda Swami, I was maybe two years in Krishna consciousness, two, three years, and it was my best week ever. And, uh, and I was flying the day, before, the day after I was flying to India and everything was arranged. And I almost thought I'd become a pure devotee now and I couldn't take it anymore. It was so ecstatic. And, and I had a, a, a short darshan with, with Sodhana Sachinanda Swami. And um, I told him about the experience and I told him, always when I have this experience, the next day, it's gone because I get proud or whatever. And we all experience this. We have our Krishna conscious, most ecstatic day. And the next day we're completely finished and even we, we commit sins or whatever. Um, why? And his answer was because we are not praying every day to Krishna to, 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 to remove Maya. Like then he mentioned Prabhupada was praying every, every time to Krishna that he protects him from Maya. And he told me, this is the secret. Like we chant every day our rounds, we, we eat vegetarian food, we, we hear kata, we follow the principles, we wake up early in the morning, most of us. Then he said, um, we should make it to a daily sadhana that we pray to the Lord, that he protects us from Maya, and that he engages us in his devotional service. I always forget it myself. I mention it sometimes in classes and I ask devotees to remind me. So maybe you can remind each other um, if you pray today. Because actually this is very important, not only service and, and chanting, that we really set the intention and really open our heart to the Lord. Not just, we think the Lord knows anyways, he knows everything. So what's the big deal to tell him? But it's different. He realized that himself that we, when we offer prayer to the Lord and it comes deep from our heart, especially when we pray for other devotees or other people, um, there's so much love and devotion and reciprocation from the Lord even. So this is the kind of summary, summary that we should be careful of apparatus because apparatus is like, it's this, it's, it destroys our spiritual Im immune system. If we are healthy, spiritual healthy, but if you commit offenses against uh, the reasons I men uh, mentioned before, then we will suffer, suffer from lust and from material desires, what brings us more and more away and separates us from Krishna. And that we set, set the intention before we do service that we really pray to the Lord and, and, and tell him it's, it's for you, please Krishna kindly accept it. And the third thing that we pray that we have this, keep this in mind that we in the material prison, all of us, and that we pray to Krishna, it's dangerous. We can, every, every second we can fall in Maya. It's nobody is safe, um, only in a certain, level of Krishna consciousness, we can stay there forever, hopefully, but as long as we're in our condition, it's very difficult and we should be very careful. We should not be you now totally mental and, and, and freak out all the time. And everything is an offense and I can't do anything. I have to stay at home and don't talk to anyone because I'm an offender. This should not be our mood, but it should be the mood that, yeah, that, that we pray, that we ask Krishna to help us to overcome our mentality and our misconception in life and that we step by step can surrender. Okay, I see it's eight o'clock. I wanted to stop a little bit earlier to leave um, room for questions. I don't know if there are some questions or is, if there's time left. Uh, maybe we can have one or two questions or comments. Yeah, I do think we have some time left for questions. And usually there are some questions from the audience always. And I see already a hand is going up. Uh, we need to come uh, closer. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, uh, when you were making the point that we have to be humble and I know all our spiritual uh, role models, maybe we can call it that way, they are humble really and, um, and 
I personally see that I'm not too humble, but maybe I'm humble outside. And what is better to be just humble outside or if I'm not humble in, inside, should I be not humble outside? Because it's what helps better on the spiritual path. What do you mean with outside? You, you know, I, I'm, the outside, I, I'm actually sometimes I know how to behave or something like this or what to do in this place, but I don't feel like... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm already at the point of understanding it or, you know, what I mean. Do you know, I understand what I mean? I think Are she means, sure? I think she means that sometimes we have certain patterns of behavior that we show uh, to others. Like we have tried to be, uh, act humbly towards others, but on the inside, we are not really humble. It's like children. Like when you tell them, oh, you did something wrong. Now you need to apologize to your, to your yeah. brother. They say, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they are not really sorry. So something like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. But we can hide a little bit better than <laughs> yeah. children. Because you're good actors. Yeah. But yeah. What, what do you think is better on a spiritual path? I, I, I think I, I Understood, understood. Yeah, and, and one, thank you for the question. Very nice question, actually. Um, in one point, I think we should be also ourselves. It should be real. And, but on the other hand, um, even if we inside, we be not humble or we can't tolerate something, but still in the outside, maybe still we act hum humble. You don't disturb others. You don't offend others. And to try to learn this, 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 this quality of to being humble. Because... Nobody of us, it's, it's difficult to be humble the whole life. Some people maybe have this natural um, ability, I say, attribute. Uh, but for myself, it was always difficult to be humble. In the material world, we get trained to be the best, to look the best, to actually to, to be like Bhagavan, to be the wealthiest, the famous, the richest, the most beautiful, the most knowledge. So this is actually what we trained. But, but we are not... That's not what we are. We are actually a spiritual being, but we have to you know, train ourselves. We, I say, we learn. Like when you go to a music teacher, and then if you know already how to play piano, and, and you go to a new teacher, maybe he said, you now have to untrain you because I need to train you my way. Like also my Danga teacher, I know every teacher is different. So we have to relearn maybe certain behavior, and especially about this topic to being humble. Uh, I think it's still important that we sh yeah, act humble, but I also notice sometimes, hey, Krishna, bro, how can I say happy, bro? And sometimes it's too much. Yeah, it, it, could yeah. be, it could be that you are humble, that, that you show others to be humble, and this is actually more dangerous because you want to show other how humble you are. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't feel humble, you can still try at least. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, we have at one point we have to, we have to become humble to attract Krishna's mercy, and it will be step by step. But at least we should begin somewhere. Yeah, and I, I think it's okay if you inside. Not, I'm not humble. I have to pretend to be humble. Sometimes I feel humble. Sometimes not. But always have respect to others. It's very important. Yeah, I hope this satisfies your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Advaita Simka Prabhu. Uh, yeah, thank you for your lecture. I have a question about, uh, you explained very well about lust and pure love. Uh, and um, actually I want to know how to um, know this border about uh, love and lust. Because nowadays many people uh, understand not uh, really right about love. And uh, when we're trying to be to love somebody, uh, then um, sometimes uh, it's coming to last. So can you maybe explain it uh, practically uh, how we can uh, see this border, this teeny border between last and love? Yeah, teeny border, you said it. <laughs> um, what I learned also and heard um, is that, especially in a marriage or partnership, and then sometimes, you know, um, we experience love for, for someone you love. Um, and then we, he we hear also that, no, it's not la love, because love is only for Krishna. So it's lust. 
Um, but what I learned in the last few months also is, is more that um, we can also love other people, but we have to understand this love is temporary. Mm. The only love or this eternal is the love with Krishna. Of course, in the spiritual world, we are spirit souls and we also are, we are together. But after we leave this body, many of the family members and people around you, you will never see again maybe so, so fast. So this love is temporary. Um, but doesn't mean it's, it's only, we can say it's lust, you know. Lust is very, is something much deeper. Lust is when we turn our back, um, and choice separate from Krishna. But if we understand actually that all beings are connected with Krishna, that actually love, if you love Krishna, you love everyone because you don't see anyone separated from Krishna. This is real love. And even if you have a husband, children and family, um, it's an affectionate love. But if you don't have the love for Krishna, it's really, it's also not the real thing. But if you have the love for Krishna, automatically you love everyone. You can't say I love my husband and children more or my wife and the other people I don't love. So someone who really loves, he loves every entity. Same. It's an Uta Madhikari. Like when you see Shri Prabhupada, for example, he really loved everyone. He, not only his family, he, he loved the whole world. Each individual he loved. But this is real love. And the other love, I don't think it's, it's, it's lust, but it's, it's a Maybe a drop of this love that Robert had, for example. Um, but last is more our selfish um, that we that we want to enjoy. I want to enjoy this other person, and I want to get out something of it. But if you have this attitude, actually, to to serve, to give something back, to give more than you take, it's actually love. I don't know. Maybe is this what you ask? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. And there's a really good book actually from Bhakti Tirta Swami, Spiritual Warrior 2, uh, How to Transform Lust into Love. And he explains it way better than me. <laughs> there's lot, lots of tips and understandings how we can deal with the subject. Because I mean, you can't say to your wife, you know, I mean, I love you, and you can't say I lust you, you know, it's like, mm. there's love from soul to soul. It's, it's a very thin border, like you said, yeah. Okay, Hare Krishna. Karuna Shakti. Well, I don't think there are any more questions. Otherwise, if any of the viewers has still has any question, they should be saying something now. Otherwise, we will end here. Um, and I think we will briefly give you a last darshan of the deities. Jai. I want to thank you all for your kind participation and that you allow me to speak today for my own purification and to see some happy faces. I really miss you all and the devotees. And maybe you can kindly pray for me and my wife. Uh, we are trying to move to Germany. Uh, <laughs> so as soon as possible, the plan is August, end of August. Uh, my wife, she just passed the German exam, so everything is, it just depends on the lockdown situation, everything, and so I hope, I hope it works out soon. So with your kind prayers, we can come soon, and then we can visit you in Berlin. <laughs> we would be glad not to, not only to have you on Zoom again, but to see you live in person, you and your wife, and yeah. uh, you can give lecture here, or your wife, or well, <laughs> Your, your future family, I don't know. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you again for uh, giving this interesting and uh, yeah, inspiring lecture and for answering the questions. Um, and thanks to all our viewers. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.